April 10th, Aleph, the Fool, Eber 71. 9. Yea, ignorance is like unto a closed and airless vessel. The soul, a bird, shut up within, it warbles not, nor can it stir a feather, but the songster mute and torpid sits, and of exhaustion dies. But even ignorance is better than head learning, with no soul wisdom to illuminate and guide it. The seeds of wisdom cannot sprout and grow in airless space. To live and reap experience, the mind needs breadth and depth and points to draw it towards the diamond soul. Rumbling of the tumbler is not is pointing towards something, right? Seek not those points in Maya's realm, but soar beyond illusions. Search the eternal and changeless set, mistrusting fancies, false suggestions. Like, why that spot on the stomach instead of another spot? Uh, <laughs> For mind is like a mirror, it gathers dust while it reflects. It needs the gentle breezes of soul wisdom to brush away the dust of our illusions. Seek, O beginner, to blend thy mind and soul. Shun ignorance, and likewise shun illusion. Avert thy face from world deceptions. Mistrust thy senses. They are false, but within thy body, the shrine of thy senses. Seek in the impersonal for the eternal man. And having sought him out, Look inward, thou art Buddha. Shun praise, O devotee. Praise leads to self-delusion. Thy body is not self. Thy self is in itself without a body. And either praise or blame affects it not. Self-gratitude, O disciple, is like unto a lofty tower, up which a haughty fool is climbed. Thereon he sits in prideful solitude, and unperceived by any but himself, False learning is rejected by the wise and scattered to the winds by the good law. Its wheel revolves for all the humble and the proud. The doctrine of the eye is for the crowd. The doctrine of the heart for the elect. The first repeat in pride, behold, I know. The last, they who in humbleness have garnered. Lo, confess, thus have I heard. Great sifter is the name of the heart doctrine, O disciple. The wheel of the good law moves swiftly on. It grinds by night and day. The worthless husks it dries from out the golden grain. The refuse from the flower. The hand of karma guides the wheel. The revolutions mark the beatings of the karmic heart. True knowledge is the flower. False learning is the husk. If thou wouldest eat the bread of wisdom, thy flower, thou hast to knead with Amrita's clear waters. But if thou needest husks with Maya's dew, thou canst create but food for the black doves of death, the birds of birth, decay and sorrow. If thou art told that to become our Han, thou hast to cease to love all beings, let them lie. Uh, tell them they lie. If thou art told that to gain liberation, thou hast to hate thy mother and disregard thy son, to disavow thy father and call him householder, for man and beast all pity to renounce. Tell them their tongue is false. Thus teach the Tirthikas, the unbelievers, if thou art taught that sin is born of action and bliss of absolute inaction, then tell them that they err, non-permanence of human action, deliverance of mind from thraldom by the cessation of sin and faults, are not for dava egos, uh, for, for deva egos, rock language. <laughs> Thus saith the doctrine of the heart. 
The Dharma law of the I is the embodiment of the external and the non-existing. The Dharma of the heart is the embodiment of Bodhi, the permanent and everlasting. The lamp burns bright when wick and oil are clean. To make them clean, a cleaner is required. The flame feels not the process of the cleaning. The branches of the tree are shaken by the wind. The trunk remains and move. Both action and inaction may find room in thee. Thy body agitated, thy mind tranquil. Thy soul as limpid as a mountain lake. Wouldst thou become a yogin of time's circle? Then, O Lanu, believe thou not that sitting in the dark forests, in proud seclusion and apart from men, believe thou not that life on roots and plants, that thirst assuaged with snow from the great range, believe thou not, O devotee, that this will lead thee to the goal of final liberation. Think thou not that sitting in dark forests, in proud seclusion and apart from men, believe thou not that life on roots and plants, that thirst assuaged with snow from the great range, believe thou not, O devotee, that this will lead thee to the goal of final liberation. Think not that breaking bone, that rending flesh and muscle, unites thee to thy silent self. Think not that when the sins of the gross form are conquered, O victim of the shadows, thy duty is accomplished by nature and by man. The blessed ones have scorned to do so, the lion of the law, the lord of mercy perceiving the true cause of human woe, immediately forsook the sweet but selfish rest of quiet wilds. From Aranyani, he became the teacher of mankind. After July had entered the nirvana, he preached on the mount and plain, and held discourses in the cities to devas, men, and what they consider to be gods. So kindly acts, and thou shalt reap their fruition, and action in a deed of mercy becomes an action in a deadly sin. Thus saith the sage, Shalt thou abstain from action? Not so shall gain thy soul her freedom. To reach nirvana, one must reach self-knowledge, and self-knowledge is of loving deeds, the child. Have patience, candidate, as one who fears no failure, courts no success, fixes thy soul's gaze upon the star whose ray thou art, the flaming star that shines within the lightless depths of ever being, the boundless fields of thy of the unknown. Have perseverance as one who doth forevermore endure. Thy shadows live and vanish, that which in thee shall live for evermore, that which in thee knows, for it is knowledge. It is not of fleeting life, it is the man that was, that is, that will be, for whom the hour shall never strike. If thou wouldst reap sweet peace and rest, disciple sow with the seeds of merit, the fields of future harvests, accept the woes of birth. Step out from sunlight into shade to make more room for others. The tears that water the parched soul of pain and sorrow bring forth the blossoms and the fruit of karmic retribution. Out of the furnace of man's life and its black smoke, winged flames arise. Flames purified that soaring onward neath the karmic eye weave in the end the fabric glorified of the three vestures of the path. These vestures are Nirmana Kaya, Sambhog Kaya, Dharma Kaya, Robe Sublime, The Shangha, The Shangha Robe, Tis true can purchase, Height Eternal, The sh- Shangha Robe Alone, gives the nirvana of destruction. It stops rebirth. But, O oh, Lanu, it also kills compassion. No longer can the perfect Buddhas who don the Dharmakaya glory help man's salvation. Alas, shall slaves be sacrificed to self mankind under the wheel of units? No, O oh, beginner, this is the open path the way to selfish bliss, shunned by the bodhisattvas of the secret heart, 
the Buddhas of compassion. To live, to benefit mankind is the first step. To practice the six glorious virtues is the second. To don Nirmanakaya's humble robe is to forgo eternal bliss for self, to help on man's salvation, to reach Nirvana's bliss, but to renounce it is the supreme final step, the highest on renunciation's path. No, O disciple, this is the secret path selected by the Buddhas of perfection who sacrifice the self to weaker selves. Yet, the doctrine of the heart is too high-winged for thee. If thou needest help thyself and fearest to offer help to others, then thou of timid heart be warned in time. Remain content with the eye doctrine of the law. Hope still, for if the secret path is unattainable this day, it is within thy reach tomorrow. Learn that no efforts, not the smallest, whether in right or wrong direction, can vanish from the world of causes. A in wasted smoke remains not traceless. A harsh word uttered in past lives is not destroyed, but ever comes again. The pepper plant will not give birth to roses, nor the sweet jessamine's silver star to thorn or thistle turn. Thou canst create this day for the to morrow in the great journey. Causes sown each hour bear each harvest of effects. For rigid justice rules the world with a mighty sweep of never-ending action. It brings to mortals lives of weal or woe, the karmic progeny of all our former thoughts and deeds. Take them as much as merit hath in store for thee. O thou of patient heart, be of good cheer and rest content with fate. Such is thy karma, the karma of the cycle of thy births, the destiny of those who in their pain and sorrow are born along with thee, rejoice and weep from life to life, chained to thy previous actions. Act then for them today, and they will act for thee tomorrow. Tis from the bud of renunciation of the self that springeth the sweet fruit of final liberation. To perish doomed is he who out of fear of Mara refrains from helping man, lest he should act for self. The pilgrim who would cool his weary limbs in running water, yet dares not plunge for terror of the stream, risks to succumb from heat. An action based on selfish fear can bear but evil fruit. The selfish devotee lives to no purpose. The man who does not go through his appointed work in life has lived in vain. Follow the wheel of life. Follow the wheel of duty to race and kin, to friend and foe, to close and close thy mind to pleasures as to pain. Exhaust the law of karmic retribution. Gain cities for thy future birth. If son thou canst not be, then be the humble plant. A. If thou art debarred from flaming like the noonday sun, Upon the snow-capped mount of purity eternal, then choose, O neophyte, a humbler course. Point out the way, however dimly, and lost among the host, as does the evening star to those who tread their path in darkness. Behold, Magmar, Mars, as in his crimson veils his eye sweeps over slumbering earth. Behold the fiery aura of the hand of Logba. Extended in protecting love over the heads of his ascetics. Both are now servants to Nyema, son. Left in his absence, silent watchers in the night. Yet both in Kalpa's past were bright, Nyema's. And may in future days again become two sons. Such are the falls and rises of the karmic law in nature. Be O oh, Lenu, like them, give light and comfort to the toiling pilgrim, and seek out him who knows still less than thou, who in his wretched dissolution sits starving for the bread of wisdom, and the bread which feeds the shadow without a teacher, hope or consolation, and let him hear the law.
Tell him, O candidate, that he who makes a pride and self-regard bondmaidens to devotion, that he who cleaving to existence still lays his patience and submission to the law as a sweet flower at the feet of Shakya Thupapa becomes a Sirotapati in this birth. The Siddhis of perfection may loom far, far away, but the first step is taken, the stream is entered, and he may gain the eyesight of the mountain eagle, the hearing of the timid doe. Tell him, O aspirant, that true devotion may bring him back the knowledge, that knowledge which was his in former births, the deva sight and deva hearing. You know, white wings, angel, are not obtained in one short birth. Be humble, if thou wouldst attain to wisdom. Be humbler still when wisdom thou hast mastered. Be like the ocean which receives all streams and rivers. The ocean's mighty calm remains unmoved. It feels them not. Restrained by thy divine, thy lower self. Restrained by the eternal, the divine. A great is he who is the slayer of desire. Still greater he in whom the self-divine has slain the very knowledge of desire. Guard thou the lower lest it soil the higher. The way to final freedom is within thyself. That way begins and ends outside of self. Unpraised by men and humble is the mother of all rivers. In Tirthika's proud sight, empty human form filled with Amrita's sweet waters, in the sight of bulls with all, the birthplace of the sacred rivers is the sacred land, and he who wisdom hath is honored by all men. Our Hans and sages of the boundless vision are rare as is the blossom of the Adamara tree. Our Hans are born at midnight hour, together with the sacred plant of nine and seven stalks, the holy flower that opens and blooms in darkness, out of the pure dew and on the frozen bed of snow-capped heights, heights that are trodden by no sinful foot. No, Arhan. O Lanu becomes one in that birth, when for the first time the soul begins to long for final liberation. Get, O thou anxious one, no warrior volunteering fight in the fierce strife between the living and the dead. Not one recruit can ever be refused the right to enter on the path that leads toward the field of battle, for he either shall win, or he shall fall. Yea, if he conquers, Nirvana shall be his, before he cast his shadow off his mortal coil, that pregnant cause of anguish and illimitable pain. In him will men a great and holy Buddha honor, and... What we see here is that even the principles are means.